All right, so let's dive in and build a price prediction model just using basic data that's available from Yahoo Finance's API. So to get started, you might need to install a couple of things. So I'm just going to realize that's really small, so let's blow it up a little bit. You're going to need to install a couple of things. Uh, Pandas, you might already have. Y Finance, you might already have. Scikit-learn, that's going to be the machine learning uh, library that we use to, to piece all this together. Those are the three requirements. Even if you already have them, just type in pip install pandas, why uh, pandas, why finance and scikit learn should get the job done. You see, I got all this requirement already satisfied stuff. Those are already installed on my machine, but you will need those three things to follow through the rest of this video. From there, we're going to import those three things. So we want to import pandas. I typically import that as PD. We're going to import uh, Yahoo Finance as YF, and then we're going to bring in and. Luckily, this is GitHub Copilot that is suggesting the code here. I'm hoping it suggests the whole code, then we don't have to do too much. But we want to import uh, test train train test split rather from sklearn. What this is going to do is allow us to take our data set and just basically split it into two, some for training, some for testing. So it's a, a very useful for us. We're also going to want to, in, in this particular video, we're going to use a uh, random forest regressor. So this is trying to import linear regression, but we're going to use a, a random forest uh, regressor in this particular one. Um, and then metrics, mean squared error, this allows us to find, you know, just, well, how, how accurate our model was. And then finally, the last thing we're going to want to do is import uh, pyplot. So that's matplotlib as plt. This is going to be a uh, a graphing library. So it's going to allow us to, to graph out sort of what we find with, with this model. And I've, I've not run through building this model, so I don't really know what we're going to find. It's very bare bones, very simple. So it's unlikely that we find something, you know, that, that generates a ton of alpha. If we did, um, this video would not be live because I would be running away with it. Uh, so we'll, we'll do, we'll do Rocket Lab. Um, it's just a, a stock that well, actually we'll do Apple because it's got a lot of a lot of data, right? Apple is probably the easiest one. A uh, ton of data out there, but what we're going to do is reach out to Yahoo Finance's API. So that's we import it here as YF. We're going to pass it the stock Apple, and we're going to do. You know, this is a very long time frame, but well, it's good because it gives us a lot of test data. We'll do uh, right up until. Uh, so I'm recording this middle of May, so we'll do May. 15th. All right, so that's you know, 14 plus years of data on Apple there that we're gonna get back. And it's stored inside this, this data variable. Um, so then what we wanna do is, is start taking or start building our feature set. So we could just build a model that says, hey, look at the closing price yesterday. What will the price today be? That would be the very, like the most bare bones model you could possibly think of. Uh, and probably better as, as like a, a linear regression. But for this random forest regressor, we're going to add a ton more data in there. We're going to explore a bunch of different variables and just see if it can give us a good model, especially with such a large amount of data. Um, so how we do that is, is we're going to start adding uh, things like uh, previous close. Uh, that one's going to be um, in Yahoo Finances it is under close. And you can see... GitHub Copilot is doing a fantastic job, which I really like, which means that someone's probably been down, someone's probably been down this path before, which is awesome. Uh, makes our job a lot easier. Uh, we're gonna do high, um, high minus low was one that I wanted to try out, data high minus data low. We also wanna do open and close. All right, it's, it's getting there. Uh, volume. And then we also want to do the moving averages, which we can calculate ourselves. Um, a moving average for those that have never seen it is you look at the last 10 days of prices so and, and take the average or the last 50 days, if it's a 50 day moving average or the last 200. So this particular one, we're just going to try out a, a moving average of 10. Um, figured that out too. A lot, of, a lot of this just blows my mind still as to how good GitHub Copilot is. It can, you know, suggest very basic things like this where we're not having to, we're not reinventing the wheel by making a 10-day moving average. So it just does it right there for you. Of course, you do still have to know what you're riding so you can figure out if it's doing it correctly or not. Um, and then last thing we're going to do is, is drop 
any sort of um, drop any uh, NA values, and we do need to do that from data, data dot drop NA. Cool. So now we have uh, our data set, which is. Well, we, we already had our data set rather from Yahoo Finance, but we've added a number of additional columns to it. We've added the previous close, which just looks at yesterday. We've added the, the high and low, uh, high minus low for the difference, the open minus the close, the volume, uh, the moving average right there for a 10 day window and moving average for a 50 day window. And then we got rid of any of the empties. So now what we do is to build the model is, is uh, we define Define features. So defining our features, previous close is one that we want, high, low is one that we want, open, close, volume, MA10, yep. So we've got all of our features there and we typically put those under X though. I don't wanna put those under. So X is usually what we use to define the features. Y is usually what we use to define, hey, this is what we're trying to predict. So we've defined our features, we've got the, the ones that we just built, and we've got the close as what we're trying to predict. So now what you do is you split the data, split the data. Here we're gonna do um, train test. So this is uh, splitting all these features across training and test, and then we're gonna have a Y train and a Y test. We'll just let it do its thing because that it seemed like it was doing, it's on a happy path. So train test split, like I said earlier, it takes all of the data and it splits it down into 20% is gonna to go to these test variables, X test and Y test, and 80% uh, is gonna to go to these training variables, X train and Y train. There is uh, one more thing to do, and this would be um, random state. So you can give it a, like a, you can give this any, any sort of numerical value um, but what it does is if you were trying to reproduce this, just following along with me, what this would do is, is if you kept the same number as me, you should get the exact same result provided you're using the exact same dates. So if everything you've written so far is the same, then just put in the same random state in here, make sure that you get the same results. So that's the data split. And now what we do is we train the model. Uh, you see, I don't really have to do much anymore. Um, <laughs> the, uh, GitHub Copilot's kind of taking care of it. But what we want to do is we want to set, you, again, you can set a random state, which it already did here. But what we also want to do is set an N estimator. I usually go about 100 on this. And so an N estimator, when, when I said I usually go about 100, an N estimator is uh, used in these random forest models. So random forests are what's called an ensemble learning method. And they are used for just like classification and regression tasks. These N estimators are a parameter that we can give it. And it just specifies, hey, this is how many trees. So trees are the different paths that your model could take. This is how many trees we want to try and build this model with. I usually always go with 100, but you can you can mess around with this. It, the higher you go, the more it's gonna take to train it, obviously. But 100 always seems like a fair number to me to at least get started with. And as this is a very basic model, and not 100 is, is just what I'm gonna go with here uh, for, for demo and illustration purposes. So once we, we've got our model now, this random forest regressor, next thing is to fit it to our training data that we split off up here. So we pass in the X and the Y variables there. So we're gonna train this model. Now seeing that little red squiggly line, so there's something wrong here, which is the lack of comma right there. So that should fix that. There we go. Finally, once you've trained the model, which is done on this line, we then evaluate it. So, um, well, uh, make predictions rather. You don't wanna evaluate it without making predictions first. So to make those predictions, it's correctly pulled out. What we would do is is we give it a, a Y predictions variable and we assign to that the model, predict all the uh, X, or give it all the X test data and give us the Y predictions out. And then that's how we can now evaluate the model, um, evaluate the model, which is typically using something like a mean squared error, which we imported earlier. So we can say, hey, here's the MSE, the mean squared error. Here's our test data. Here's our predictions that we got from the model. Tell us how accurate things were with this print mean squared error. And before we run it, just to, just to see, we're gonna do all this at once, right? Before we run it, we're gonna plot the results. It already knows that we wanna do a chart. So uh, 
PLT is is pretty much the standard for plotting anything out in Python. So matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, figure size 14 by 7. I'm probably just going to keep tabbing this out because I think it's going to know exactly what we want to do. Uh, I don't know if maybe I want a legend. Let's see. Um, it even has the, the three little dashes where it's probably stole it from somebody else's code right there. This should give us, let's see, Y test. This should give us what we want. We could probably give it a, a color just so, we, let's do a color. Color equals blue, color equals red. Um, we still need that comma there, that's why we've got the red squiggly. Let's just see what this gives us. So to run this, uh, you'll see I called it price predictor.py. So I'm gonna just do price predictor.py down here hit enter and let's see what happens. As you can see, we got a mean squared error of a dollar and 25 cents, which seems pretty good. We got the world's most horrendous graph back, which makes absolutely no sense. Uh, let's see how we can go about fixing this a little bit because yeah, that is scarily bad. Fixing this, let's, if, if you're an eagle-eyed, I guess, data person, you probably think, hey, uh, a line graph is probably not ideal for this kind of data because obviously we're just drawing lines everywhere. I think that's probably the overarching issue. So we can go back and sort of look here. We, we give it a size, we give it a plot. The plot is probably okay. Uh, we give this a plot. The plot there is probably okay as well. But here we want to, instead of doing that will do a scatter. The scatter is a different type of graph, so it should give us something a little bit better. One second, I still have the chart running and Python doesn't like that. There we go, close it down. And let's try it one more time and see what we get out this time. All right, getting a little bit better. This is, you can now see we've got little red dots as predicted price and actual price is blue. What if we just do a scatter on that one too? Try it again, third time's the charm. And you'll see we get the same mean squared error, right? But like I mentioned earlier, if uh, there you go, predicted price and actual price, it's sticking fairly close with the, the predicted price, but this might be an overfit model. That's not something that we will get into in this video though. Uh, this was just a, a basic, here's how you could build a pricing model. But what I was saying is, is you'll see how we've got this mean squared error where it's $1.25 a piece. And what you can do is, is like I mentioned earlier, where these numbers pretty much change things up. Let me kill that chart again and rerun it. And this time we should get something different because we've given it a different random state. So you see this time we got $1.37. So that random state was $1.25. This one's $1.37. You'll see it's mostly in line with predicting where the price would be. But like I mentioned, there's a good chance that uh, we are overfitting this data. And so this wouldn't be that fun of a video if we didn't actually try this on sort of real data. Um, so I, you might have seen earlier, I put uh, May 15th as the, the date here, the end date of grabbing the data. Today is actually May 16th and it's after the market has closed. Um, so let's see if it can correctly predict the, the price today. Uh, price on 5.16. Get the latest data, uh, it's gonna be last. The last date is gonna be equal to our data. So the last row basically, which is yesterday, the 15th. Um, We don't need to go ahead and download it like it's suggesting there because we already have it, but we will just set a future future dates is equal to, uh, we'll do a last date uh, plus time delta. Um, and yeah, why not? We'll do, we'll do the next sort of six days there. Even though I think it's probably gonna get weekends, but um, we'll be okay with that. Time delta we have to um, import at the top. So I just hit that there. It's just going to add another line for us from time uh, date time import time delta. So it's correctly saying here future date. Uh, it's taking our data frame index future dates columns. We're going to do x columns from that one. So we want our, our x columns um, and then future data previous close. So so what we want to do is we want to use the 
the last known data point to initialize init future data. And if you've never used Copilot before, you get in the habit of writing comments because then it basically is able to suggest things pretty quickly for you, which is awesome. Um, you know, it, it's a bit lazy, but it gets the job done, so that's good. Uh, so we're going to do for date in future dates. For date in future dates, we want to do um, future date lock. We're going to get the date. The previous close is equal to last row close. Date. Um, Realizing I'm doing future date, I'm doing future data. I'm gonna do the high low is last row high minus. Uh, oh, we could just do last row high close because it's already there. High low, it's already there. This one we do future. Yep. We need the volume. We need the uh, MA10, and then we need the. Actually, no, we don't want this one like this. What we want is we're gonna do data because we're predicting into the future, right? So it's going to have to use the predictions to make more predictions. So we're still going to have to calculate our rolling window on this data. Otherwise, things will sort of start to drift in terms of what we've got. But this does mean that we will be making predictions based on predictions, which can get a little bit tough. But really, we're just doing this to see if it can see how close it was to today's actual closing price of Apple, which I've not looked at the closing price of yet. So we'll have to see that in just a minute. Um, so future... Uh, future price prediction, and then it's going to be okay. Model dot predict future data, and then yeah, that's the, I mean that's it, right? Print oh, and look at Google Finance. All right, so for date and future dates, I need a colon there. Everything looks good. Let's try this out. Python price predictor. So it should. I mean, it's going to give us the same graph it did. It's then going to print out. So it doesn't like my x dot columns. There we go. Predicted price on five sixteen. Hundred and eighty seven dollars and eighty cents. Let's go check out Apple stock price. Um, so we've just got finance Yahoo Finance here. One hundred and eighty nine dollars. So two dollars off. Uh, a little bit more than the dollar thirty-seven. Um, so what was the closing price yesterday? Previous close was one eighty-nine seventy-two, uh, and it closed today at one eighty-nine eighty-four. So the model predicted, I guess, that Apple would go down on five sixteen, but it ended up, you know, just staying relatively flat. That will be a wrap on this video, though. We have uh, built a very basic model that does not predict with absolute certainty the day's stock price, which is good because that means I can put the video out because yeah, if, if, if this model had kicked out 189.84, I might have been a bit more skeptical and I might have uh, dug into that a little bit more and you wouldn't be seeing this because I'd be uh, busy trying to calculate the closing prices of everything for Friday, May 5th. 17th yes all right well thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this one if you did leave a thumbs up drop a comment if there's any other models you want me to explore or any other feature sets you want me to try and dabble with anything like that i'll, I'll try and uh try and get some more videos out there where we we play about with data in python and and try and build some stuff but yeah thank you for watching i will see you next time have a good one